Okay, now welcome to Doris's Kitchen. And because we're starting a series of cooking with Grandma, I felt that Grandma and Granddaughter needed to have special aprons. So this is how to make aprons without using a pattern. So if you listen carefully, play the video again and stuff, you can make these. They make beautiful gifts, you know, if you have a birthday coming up. You can make one for you and one for your little one and stuff and add a few cake mixes with it and stuff or cookie mixes and everything to make it easy but to get the young ones into cooking uh, because now everybody goes for what's fast and convenient and the old traditions of cooking homemade it's kind of going out the window so let's bring some of that back uh, you know money's getting tight and stuff so people need to learn to cook more at home and to cook meals and to cook uh, treats and desserts and everything. So here we're going to start a series of cooking with grandma. We've already done two videos and now it's time for the apron before we continue with more uh, because I kind of tested the little granddaughter out and it seems to be okay. She likes it. She looks forward to it when she comes to grandma's house. So this is how we do it. Now this is making an apron with no pattern. Okay, so what you're going to do is first of all, you're going to measure uh, from breast to breast. You know, because everybody's a different size, so this is how you're going to do it to make a pattern. Uh, well, to cut it out and all that good stuff. So just from the top, from breast to breast, and then the center is from waist to waist. Okay, you go from one side of your waist to the other side of your waist. Okay, and then measure from your breast, which is just a little, you know, for us ladies, just a little over the breast line to the waistline. Okay, so that's your measurement that way. And then there's your measurement that way. Okay, and uh, then after you want to be able to measure from the top of the breast right here to the top of the other one to go around your neck. That way you'll know how long uh, this needs to be. Okay? Uh, because for everybody it's different. But that's a real easy way from breast to breast and measure around. So you know how much of a loop you need to put for around your head for the apron to fit correctly. Okay, and then from waist to waist. So what I did was, I made this double-sided. Uh, only because I got such a good deal on the material. Check the clearance rack. I paid only $3 a yard. I bought two yards. Because there was a sewing in the middle of it, uh, I got two and a half yards for the price of three on clearance to top it off. So i able able to make my apron, the little girl's apron, and a whole other outfit. Because <laughs> it really don't take much. You know, if you go ahead and measure that, and measure from waist to waist, you can do it two-sided or you can do it one-sided. If you're only doing it one-sided, you're going to want some more of this to put down around here at the bottom. I made it double-sided, and then I gave it this extra sewing uh, because of the, uh, you know, when you wash it, you want to make sure it keeps its shape and everything so it doesn't all curl right up. So this is for extra um, strongness, to make it a little bit stronger. Okay, so for the little girl, I done the same. I measured from chest to chest, from breast to breast, and then from up to her waist. She's just a little thing, so it doesn't take very much for little ones. Okay, now I'm going to use this. Now this is really good. This is that ribbon that just folds right up. Double fold uh, base tape. It's quilted. This is really super good. It's super strong because if you notice right here, not only is it folded in half already for you, which makes it good to just put your material right in between, but if you open that up, look at that. Extra double. So you're really going to have a lot of good strength into that, okay? Because it's already folded double for you and then you're sewing it and you're going to have it sew double again so there's a lot of good strength in that so you don't have to worry about that okay so I'm going to end up putting that on the top and then you know like I did for mine 
and going around and using the tie. So if you're wondering how long you need to have it, uh, you know, for tying up and everything, it's the length of your waist. So measure your waist, add two extra inches, just for good measures, okay? And that's how much length you need to begin with on this side. And then if you do it the same on the other side, it gives you plenty uh, for sewing, okay? But what I'm going to do for hers, she's going to be double-sided too and stuff, but I want to add a little more fanciness because it's for a little girl and it's okay for us to be plain, but you know, you've got to add a little more fanciness for the encouragement of wanting to cook and they need to look so pretty and stuff. So I'm going to add a fancy little garland uh, gathering going all the way around from the waist to the other waist. So what I did was, because I have the square, so this will be my center right here. So I took a square, folded it in half, ironed it. Here we are. Folded it in half to iron it. Now I think what most people uh, wonder uh, on sewing and making things homemade and everything, which is a lot stronger uh, than what you buy today and everything, uh, is how to gather it. So this is what I'm going to show you. But first, I did not mark with my halfway. I need to mark my halfway mark here. And the phone is ringing. So I'm going to cut right at my halfway mark. That way I know exactly where the center needs to be when I do my fold. Just a little bit, not too much now. Okay, so you see I have my little cut. Okay, so that will end up being my center, which is right here, uh, when I do that. So when I do my fold, I will begin right from there, pinning it to where my center is, right here, to where my center is, right here. And then that way there you know that when you do the other side, because first you're going to do one side, you're going to put it on one side, and then after you get that sewed, you have to do the other side. And then after... I'll do the sewing like this in between so that you have that extra sewing going all the way around for the strength so it doesn't lose its shape in washing or anything. So I think what people really want to see, and I'll show you that. I mean, YouTube used to give me all the time I wanted, and then when they changed, they went to giving me just um, 10 minutes. Then they kind of move me up to 15. So here we are, and I'll show you how you do that. Okay, so this is my little one, and I will be needing to pin it afterwards. So let's keep the little pin ball going here. So what you need to do is, you know, usually I sew it two and a half. So you're going to want your stitch to be longer. So I'm going to move that to four. Okay, leave some extra string. Make sure you have string because that's where your pulling is. Go real close, okay? Because you know when you do sew, you sew at five eighths and everything. But you're going to want it real close uh, for this gathering. done the dresses and stuff, people wanted to see more sewing, and I think it's really because of the arms and everything, people want to pick up sewing, but they really don't know how to gather the material, you know, they think they have to, okay, just fold it over and um, pin it, fold it over and pin it, but that's not how it's done at all. So we'll show you how this is done. And then anybody who wants to see the finishing touch, all you have to do is uh, 
stay tuned and watch some more of my videos cooking with grandma so uh, then you'll get to see me and the little granddaughter Kara wearing our aprons as we cook for you her mom's going to college so while well, mom goes to college on Tuesdays I'll have her because mom's got to do morning and night and dad's already going to have his hands full with one uh, she took this last semester off to have a baby okay now if you take the top one going this way you're going to want to use the top one going the next way always make sure you turn this back to your two and a half after for your sewing if you forget it's not going to be so nice okay and see how you just pull and then pass it down pull and pass it down pull and pass it down I didn't know if I was showing you that right so I started with the top thread so when I go you know go my halfway I want to go the other way and see how that gathers and that's how you do sleeves when you're making dresses when you're following a pattern but right now this is for my apron just to add some fanciness for the little girl make her feel special she already loves cooking and then she gets to hey daddy try some of this so just to get the little ones back into cooking and it's something for me to do with her when I have her you know because you can only play so much winter's cold outside so going to the swings and stuff like that is not my cup of tea so let's see if we can get the little girl doing something different. She loves this. She loves cooking. And can also help her with gaining some weight because she is a little tiny thing. Okay, almost halfway. And then I'll go to the other side. Because I made my cut in the middle, I know exactly where my halfway mark is. I don't know if I'm showing this high enough for you guys. Maybe I'll back this up and you can see a little bit more. There you go. Now the one thing that's really important when you do that, uh, your apron and stuff, you know, before you do that final sewing that I did going around, is iron. Make sure you iron that way that that sewing is right where it's supposed to be in the middle so that uh, it doesn't overlap and show on one side or the other when you're doing um, a double-sided apron okay and that's right there and here's my halfway mark see and that's how you do gatherings and then when you pin it, you just stretch it out to where you think you're going to need it. You know, when I go around the curves, I'm really going to need it. And then I'll be doing the other side, so I'm really going to need to do that. Now again, start with the top, just like you did on the other side. Because if you pull on the bottom, then you're going to undo what you just done on the other side, you know. So if you pull the top string, pull the top string on the other side too. And you always know that when you're sewing, you put the two good sides of the material, not the back side, the two front sides, face to face. And remember that when you go to do the other part, which will be the bottom, because I'll have to do the same to the bottom on this side. And then there's my center. And then I'll be sewing from there. So just stay tuned and watch some of those cooking shows to see how it all turns out. If you're on my penetrists and stuff, then I'm sure you can see the, you'll be able to see the pictures there. There's not too much you can do in 15 minutes. But maybe in the future they'll give me more time so I can show you all of it. But hopefully I gave you the idea of how to measure and how to do all that. 
You don't have to add this extra fanciness. You can go just plain.